Hey, what's up guys? For today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to create star trails using Adobe Photoshop. Now in the past, I taught you guys how to create star trails using Star Stacks, which is a great program. It does some amazing things and it's also free, so you can't beat that. But uh, Photoshop allows you to customize your star trails a little bit differently. And I'll show you exactly what I mean when we jump into this tutorial. So if you're interested in the Star Stacks tutorial, I'll put that in the description below and um, I'll go over the pros and cons of, of each method as well. So let's just jump right into this tutorial and get started. All right guys, so here's the picture we're gonna be creating using Adobe Photoshop. This was taken at Mono Lake in California and I highly recommend it. It's so creepy and odd and eerie, but uh, I loved it there. It was very cool to shoot. So separate your star trail images into a folder of their own, like I've done here. Next, you wanna open up Lightroom if you haven't already and click library Then grab all your star trail images and drag them into Lightroom. Hit import. When they're done importing, click on the develop module and here's all my star trail images and then these last three brighter photos are actually longer exposures over a minute long to increase the shadow area of my foreground I'm gonna stack these three images to reduce noise and then blend it with my star trail images so I'm gonna select all three and change the white balance it's very green, so I'm gonna try auto, see where that puts me. That's pretty good. I'm gonna cool it down a little bit and increase my shadows, increase the sharpening a little bit. And I'll do a little bit of noise reduction, but not much because when I stack these images, that should help reduce the noise. I'll make it a little bit cooler. I'm more focused on the foreground area. I don't really care what the sky is doing. That looks pretty good. Let's bump up the saturation and vibrance and let's move on to the star trail pictures. Now they're a lot more underexposed but that's actually a good thing because that will give me more color in the sky. I'm going to do a gradient filter for the foreground and even though I'm going to use the other pictures for my foreground I still want to get this exposure level uh, relatively close so that way when I go to blend the images it's a lot easier so I'll increase the shadows and my exposure a little bit more make sure all your pictures are selected so you're doing the exact same thing to all of them I'm going to do another gradation filter for the sky and adjust the exposure and I'm going to pull the highlights down. I really want to try and pull out as much color as possible. So I'm going to increase the saturation. And now it's pretty good. I'll do a global uh, saturation boost. I'll increase the sharpening a little bit. I think I'll leave it as that. Let me just scroll through and check these other images. All right, select all the images once you're done. Go to export. And then just pick the settings that you want. Put them in a subfolder. Uh, if you want to save them out as JPEGs or TIFFs and hit export. I already saved mine out into a separate folder right here, so just to save some time. I already exported mine right here to save some time. So the next thing we can do is open up Adobe Bridge and go to the folder that has the exported images. For me, it's on my desktop. And there's your pictures. So you want to select them all. Then go to Tools, 
Photoshop, load files into Photoshop layers. Now this is the one downside of doing star trails in Photoshop. This process could take a very long time depending on how large the files are and how many you have. Um, I recommend just walking away from your computer and just checking on it every half hour or so. All right, so once that's done, you can see I have all my star trail images and my foreground images are on top. I'm gonna hide those. Next, you wanna select all your star trail images and change the mode from normal to lighten. This is going to create the star trail effect you see here. Now as you notice if we zoom in we have a ton of plane trails. Now the one thing I really love about the Photoshop star trail method is it's very easy to get rid of these uh, plane trails. So if we go back to Adobe Bridge we could find each individual picture that has a plane going through it. And then take note of uh, which images has that plane or satellite trail. Select that layer and then select your brush and make sure it's on black. And now what we can do is actually paint away the plane trails. Check out how easy this is. Normally I would spend countless of hours cloning out planes and satellites and you know whatever. This makes life so much easier. So I'm just gonna do a couple more so you guys see how great this is and um, I'll speed it up a little bit. Okay, so I'm not going to get rid of all the plane trails for this tutorial. I just wanted to show you how easy and simple this was. And some people might be good at this point, but we're going to continue and go further. Now, now if you played around with star stacks, there's an option called Comet Mode. It's very cool, but um, even on long trails, the comet doesn't seem that long enough for me. So the good thing about Photoshop is we could start playing around with the opacity and create our own comet length and, uh, and it's just really awesome to do and kind of cleans up the image a little bit better than a normal star trail looks so I'll show you exactly how we're going to do that. So to create our comet mode in Photoshop we're going to scroll down to the last images in this sequence and what I like to do is change the opacity to 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, all the way up to 10, as uh, you're going to see here. And once you reach 10, start selecting 10 Im images at a time, and we're going to do 10%, then 15% for the next 10 images, then 20%. So we're going to change the increments by 5% every 10 images and this is going to start creating a tail that thins out uh, on our star trails. Alright, so I'm going to speed this up now that you kind of have the idea of what we're doing here. So here's the effect that we get from changing the opacity on our star trail images. And aesthetically, I just think it looks a little more pleasing than your standard star trail image. And I also think it looks better than the star stacks comet mode as well, because our trail is a little bit longer than the star stacks version would be. And um, the great thing is you could keep on playing around with the opacity in different ways to, to really fine tune it how you like. So that's the benefits of using Photoshop in this way. So once you're satisfied with the star trail you created, select all the star trail images and then right click and merge layers. Now you have everything on one layer and we can start blending it with the foreground layer. So I'm gonna turn back on my foreground layers and I'm, you can either auto align or you can manually align it like I'm gonna do here. Select the top image and click Difference. And this will show you if it's slightly out of alignment, which this one was by a little bit, but it's not terrible. 
I'll just shift that over a little bit. And let me check the one below it. All right, that one looks good. You can see the foreground's completely black. That means it, you know, it's in alignment with the one underneath it. So once you're satisfied, select all the images and right click and do Convert to Smart Object. Next, go to Layer, Smart Objects, Stack Mode, Mean. This reduced the noise in the foreground uh, really good. And yeah, everything looks very nice. So you, what you want to do now is rasterize that layer. And we're going to make a copy of the star trail and the foreground. I'm going to do difference. And you can see the alignment is off. So we're going to realign these. All right. We go to edit, transform, warp. And this will just help me get a little more accurate. So just play around here until you're satisfied that your foreground is matching your star trails. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm satisfied with that. So the next thing we want to do is um, create a layer mask on the star trail layer. Make sure that's on top. And we're going to start painting away at a very low opacity the foreground of the star trail layer so it reveals the cleaner foreground underneath. I'm just doing this pretty quickly. Um, you can definitely zoom in and you know make a smaller brush and really fine tune this. But just for this tutorial, uh, I'm just showing you the basic concept. So once you've successfully blended your foreground and your sky together, um, you could flatten your image, and then you could take your spot healing brush and remove any unwanted artifacts in your picture. All right, so I'm just going to do this really quick and show you how I clean up the image further. And once you're good, go to File, Save. Name your image and save it wherever you want to save it. All right, guys, so once I'm done saving the image, I like to bring it back into Lightroom and do some more basic edits, like play around with the saturation and... Uh, the vibrance and maybe mess around with my highlights and shadows you know just all the basic stuff and if I find gaps in the sky uh, which tends to happen uh, what I like to do is create a gradation filter over the sky and then increase the noise reduction and this kind of helps blur it a little bit so the gaps aren't as noticeable um, unfortunately there's no gap filling option with the Photoshop star trail method like there is for star stacks, but it's uh, it hasn't been a huge problem of mine. I noticed the noise reduction helps uh, helps blur everything together nicely. So give that a try if if you notice the gaps are a little too big in your picture. And that's that. I hope you guys learned something new. Please like and share, and uh, definitely subscribe for more tutorials in the future.